thought for the day, brothers and sisters, today is reading in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 5. When it came to verse 22 to 24, it spoke of a man by the name of Enoch. It says that he walked with God. Today, I wanted to speak about what it means to walk with God on this earth. When I was younger, I used to do some boxing and martial arts. We used to have a saying, that guy could talk the talk, but can he walk the walk? A lot of times, guys would try to intimidate you before you got in the ring with them by their tough rhetoric, by their tough talk. But when they got in the ring and you would hit them, all that talk went out the window and they, wasn't, they weren't as tough as they said they were. In the same way in the Christian life, we, not, we must not only talk the talk, but we have to walk the walk. And what it means to walk with God is I was searching the scriptures. Number one, there was a man by the name of Noah, which we read in the next chapter of Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9. It says that he walked with God. He was a righteous man and blameless before others. Blameless, not that we were sinless, but when we walk with God, we should be righteous. We should be set apart. People should look at us like we are the real deal that we're really trying to walk with God righteously, blameless in this world. Another man who walked with God, we're told in Malachi chapter 2, verse 6, was a man by the name of Levi. He was a priest. And what it says there, when he walked with God, he led others away from their sins. A real righteous person or one who walks with God is one who has character and integrity. And when you talk with them, they really take you for who you are. I remember when I got saved in 1985, the man who brought me to Jesus Christ was a really righteous person. I remember him bringing me to church, really caring for me, and he showed me the error of my ways. He showed me that I was doing wrong in my life. And yes, I saw my need for Christ, but he led me away from my sin. When you walk with God, my friends, people should be able to see that you walk with God and that you're being used by God to help others to steer them away from their iniquity, from their sins. People who walk with God, we are told in Revelation chapter 3, verse 4, with this, uh, there was a church there by the name of Sardis. These people kept themselves unspotted from the world, and they walked with God. In other words, we are to be separate from the world. My friends, you can't have your one foot with the world and one foot with God. God doesn't like lukewarm Christians. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17 basically tells us that if we love the world, then the love of God is not in us. James chapter 4 verse 4 tells us that to be in love with this world is to be enmity of God. Oftentimes we lose our saltiness or we lose our walk with God, our effective walk with God, when we're too involved with the things of this world. When we talk about the things in the politics and the activities and the sports and the uh, values of this world too much, people won't take us serious. We are to be set apart. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27, gave a story of how you could build your life either on rock or sand. I remember when I was a little boy, me and my brother, God rest his soul, my parents would take us to um, the beach and we would love to make these sand castles at the beach and the waves would be getting closer and closer, and we would build the sandcastle bigger, stronger, try to build a trench, a hole to protect it. And no matter what we did, when those waters and those waves came and crashed on that sand, it destroyed it, no matter what work we did. However, I remember down the beach, there was a bunch of rocks that were into the water, maybe about a quarter of a mile into the water. And no matter how much the, rock, the waves crashed against those rocks, those rocks didn't move. And that is how it is in life, my brothers and sisters. We either are building our lives on the solid rock, which is Christ, or we're building our life on the shifting sand of time with the things of this world. We are told by the book of Genesis chapter 5, verses 22 to 24 about Enoch that he had many sons and daughters. Often in my life lately, I've been thinking as my daughters are getting older, they're both in college, they're 22 and 19 years old. I also think, what kind of legacy am I leaving for my kids? Enoch walked with God. He had many sons and daughters. We are told in the Bible in, Gen in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, train up a child in the way they should go. And when they grow older, they will not depart from that way. And specifically for fathers like myself, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 tells us, Fathers, do not exasperate your children, but bring them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. 
Basically, that word exasperation means don't cause your children to stumble. Don't cause your children to grow up angry. I wasn't a perfect parent, wasn't a perfect father, but I hope the legacy that I left for my kids when they get older, God willing, and they have their own families, they can say that their father, their mother, my wife, they walked with God, not just on Sunday morning by putting on their Sunday best, uh, maybe not best clothes, but your best attitude, your best face, but really walked with the Lord each and every day with integrity and with character, being authentic, being real. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23, Not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, will I acknowledge, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. My friends, today we need to be those people who really walk with the Lord, not just with lip service, but by our actions. A tree is definitely known by its fruits, as Christ said in Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 20. Why? Because there are many wolves in sheep's clothing. There are a lot of people who press to profess to be Christians. They possess, they profess Christ with their lips, but they don't possess him with their hearts. D.L. Moody was a great evangelist in the 19th century. He was born in 1835. He died in 1899. He once said that if I walk with this world, I cannot walk with God. My friends today, let us examine ourselves to see where we are in our lives. Second Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 tells us to examine ourselves to see if we're in the faith. Look at your life. As oftentimes I have to examine myself. Again, I am not speaking at you. I'm talking with you, even as a, a fellow brother in Christ. Where is my attitude in the morning when I wake up and as the day goes on and as, as I get to sleep? Looking at my life, am I focused too much on the things of this world? the shifting sand of time. You know, as I get older, I, I read the news and I hear of people dying that I looked up to and saw, maybe even admired when I was younger, sports stars, movie stars, people with a lot of money. Recently, the uh, founder of Hustler Magazine, which caused a lot of young men to stumble when I was younger, recently passed away at the age of 78. And I say to myself, where is he now? What is it profit to gain everything in this world? and not walk with the Lord. I hope today, my brothers and sisters, that when we look at ourselves and examine our lives, that we're really walking with God, with integrity, with character. And if you have children, they could say of you as their parent, my mom and dad really love the Lord, not so much with their lips, but by their walk. God bless you all today. Stay strong in the Lord and the power of his might through Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior.